Hey you guys, welcome back to Kids Church. I'm so glad you could join me this week. Now, we are still in our series, Battle Zone, talking about how we can obtain victory in the battles that we face in life. Now, I've got a question for you guys. Are you guys good at waiting and being patient? Maybe at the doctor's office when you have to wait for a really long time for them to call your name. Or maybe you have to wait for the next season of your favorite TV show to come out or you have to wait for the ad to finish so you can watch your favorite season, right? But there's a lot of things that we have to wait and be patient for. And today we're gonna to be talking about the things that are worth waiting for. But first, let's check in with Matt and Mason and see how they are doing this week. That's the wrong loop. This loop, like this, pull it through. Put your needle there. Yeah, that pull loop. Pull around. Pull it through. It's time. You boys ready? I'm gonna find the best hiding spot ever this time. Set! Right here's perfect. <laughs> that is the weirdest signal Grandma's ever done. I wonder where Matt is. This is so perfect. Now I just have to be patient and wait for the right moment. Man, I've been looking all over the yard. I can't find Matt anywhere. It's already been an hour. Where is Mason? Man, I can't find Matt anywhere. But I'm getting kind of hungry. It's been two hours. But I'm not giving up. It's worth the wait. Boom! I win! What? How long have you been in there? A long time. I waited and waited. But it paid off, just like Joseph. Who's Joseph? Joseph, from the Bible. The kids are gonna learn about how Joseph had to wait, not in a trash can, but in a prison. Whoa, that's rough. Come on in, boys. I made banana pot pie. You're gonna love it. Just what I need, more banana. So today we're talking about waiting on God. Now, waiting on God can be really difficult when we're in a life battle, right? I mean, waiting on God, sometimes we for think like, man, are we forgotten? Did he forget about us? Well, today we're talking about how when we wait and we trust in God, he gives us strength to get through the battle. But before we talk more about that, we do need to know the what you gotta know. So let's go check in with Disco Dave and see what he has for us this week. Ha, ha, ha. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about how God gives us strength while we wait on Him. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. If I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. Wait, 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 wait. You want me to wait on God? Boring. Hold up, dude. Waiting on God ain't boring. It is totally groovy. It is far out. When you wait on God, he gives you the strength 
to do great things. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. If I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. All right, kids, that right there is what you gotta know. Well, I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino Mine! All right, you guys, I want you guys to remember, and matter of fact, memorize the what you gotta know for this week. So let's stand up together and say it all at once so we can remember it. If I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. All right, you guys, that is a great what you gotta know. I want you guys to jump up anytime Disco Dave pops up onto the screen. So today's Bible story is called Joseph Waits on God. And we're talking about Joseph in the Old Testament, found in the book of Genesis, chapter 40, verse 23, all the way through chapter 41, verse 46. So I encourage you guys to go read that in your Bibles, maybe after kids' church, and read it for yourself. But we're talking about a young man named Joseph. And he had a dream when he was a young man that he would become a ruler over many people. And so he was really excited about that, and he told his family about that. But life took a turn because his brothers didn't like that Joseph was talking about becoming a ruler over many people. And that dislike and that annoying feeling that they had towards him turned into hate. And they hated him so much, okay, that guess what they did? They threw him in a pit to die. Yeah, but don't worry, they took him out. Well, it wasn't for a good reason though. They decided they were going to sell him to be a slave. His own family sold him. Well, one day, a man bought him. His name was Potiphar, and he became a servant in Potiphar's house. But then, long story short, one day, Joseph was charged with a crime that he didn't even commit, and he was thrown in jail for many years. But then one day, things started kind of looking up for him. Things started looking like maybe they would get better because Pharaoh's cupbearer got thrown in jail. And you're like, what? How's that getting better? Well, you see, Pharaoh's cupbearer had a dream, okay? And Joseph interpreted that dream for him. And he said, hey, you're gonna be able to get out of here and Pharaoh's gonna take you back. And so the cupbearer was so excited that he promised, he's like, I'm gonna help you get out of here, Joseph. When I'm out, I'm gonna get you out. And so, man, things are looking pretty good. But the cupbearer forgot. And not for just like a week or a month, but two years. Two whole years, the cupbearer forgot all about Joseph. I don't even know how that can happen. But two years, do you guys know how long that is? Let's think about that. That's 24 months. That's 730 days. That's 17,520 hours. That's a lot of waiting in jail, hoping that one day you'll get out. Well, God didn't forget him though. Thank goodness, because he was actually behind the scenes working on an amazing plan for Joseph. Now, waiting, this waiting in jail produced incredible strength for Joseph to not only get through that waiting period, but he was actually preparing Joseph to become a ruler one day. Because you see, Pharaoh had a dream, okay? And all of the smartest people in Egypt couldn't figure out the dream. They were all stumped. And the cupbearer was like, dream, dream, dream. Joseph, hey, I remember Joseph. So finally, after two years, he remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh all about him. Now, Pharaoh called for Joseph and was like, hey, can you help me out? I, I can't figure out this dream. And so Joseph was able, able to interpret it. And the dream was that seven years of blessing would be on Egypt and harvest blessing. They would have tons of food, an abundance of food. But then there would also be seven years of famine where they wouldn't be getting any food. And so Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, asked Joseph, he was like, well, what should we do about this? Because seven years without food, we're all going to die. So Joseph said, he's like, you need to save little bits of food. You need to store up food during the seven years of extra blessing. And so Pharaoh was really impressed with Joseph. He's like, Joseph, you know what you're doing. You know what you're talking about. And so he put Joseph in second in command. That is how impressed he was. Now, I don't know if you guys remember at the beginning, I told you that Joseph had this dream that he would be a ruler over many people. Well, now we see that he is second in command. So Pharaoh is the only person more important than him. And he is like ruling over Egypt. Isn't that incredible? That dream came true. Now, there's more to that story, and I encourage you to go read it for yourself. But that was a very hard process for Joseph. 
It was so hard, waiting and waiting, being in jail, and I bet he felt like he was forgotten. Well, he was forgotten by the cupbearer, but he probably felt like he was forgotten by God too. But the thing is, is God came through. God had an amazing plan and didn't forget about him. He was working on his behalf. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that story. I want you to remember parts of it because we're gonna talk more about it in our lesson. All right, you guys, everybody up. It's time for the What You Gotta Know. What You Gotta Know. If I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. Nice job, you guys. You were ready. All right, grab your Bibles. It's time for the power verse. So lay it on a flat surface in front of you. And when I say go, with your hands in the air, don't forget that, no cheating. When I say go, we're looking for Isaiah 40, verse 31. Ready? Go. All right, so once you guys have found this verse, it's in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Let's read it together, okay? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Okay, but the main thing that I want you guys to remember, okay, if you can memorize just part of it, I want you to remember this, okay? Versions say it a little different, but I want you to remember, but those who wait in the Lord will renew their strength, okay? Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Let's memorize that, okay? Because today we're talking about how when we put our faith and our trust in God, and wait on him, he renews us and gives us strength to fight in the battles that we face. Okay, so let's get into our lesson today. I don't know if you guys noticed, but today's Bible story wasn't a military Bible story, right? Because in the past we talked about, you know, Joshua and Jericho and how they marched around and that was kind of a battle. But then also we talked about how the Israelites won a battle by worshiping. So in those military battles, we're dealing with army against army in this battle, but that wasn't today's Bible story. I don't know if you guys caught it, but today's Bible story was more of an emotional and a spiritual battle for Joseph. Because let's be honest, it's rare that we actually fight armies and armies or even against people. I mean, sometimes we have fights with people, but ultimately our fights and our battles tend to be emotional or spiritual. Well, we talked also today about how hard it can be to wait. Maybe you're good at it. I'm not always super good at it. It's hard to wait at the doctor's office. I want to be doing something or keeping myself busy. Or maybe you've had to go to the bank with your dad and you wait and you wait and you wait or at the grocery store with your mom and there's a really long line because everybody gets groceries on Sunday. And man, you just have to wait and wait. Or one of the most suspenseful things is you took a test and you're like, man, I hope that went well, but I don't really know. And so you're just really nervous and you're waiting for the grade to come back. We all wait for things. And you might've heard our power verse today and been like, what? Wait on the Lord? That's gotta be boring, right? Well, here's what you need to know. Waiting on the Lord is not boring. Because the word wait here in the verse, what they're actually talking about is slowing down and getting in God's presence. Other versions say hope in the Lord. Okay, so slowing down, taking time to really press into God. I like to think of it as kind of like waiting for a Christmas gift. Okay, so I've got a Christmas gift here. I don't know if you guys like feel this way, but at Christmas time and maybe your parents start putting presents under the tree and you're just you know, like, What's, what's in here, what's in here, I wanna know, I wanna know. And you're just anxious and you're waiting and you're exciting because you know it's gonna be something totally awesome, right? We, it's this excited anticipation, right? You're excited and you're waiting. Well, that's kind of the same thing because we're waiting on God because we know God's gonna do something great. We're pressing into him. We're saying, God, I know you've got something really good in store. So it's that kind of waiting, not the boring wait at the doctor's office, but that excited waiting. You're like, oh, I think God's going to do something great. And you're excited and pressing into him. He's got something amazing up his sleeves. But in the midst of that process, when I wait on God, I get stronger. Let's say that together. When I wait on God, I get stronger. Sometimes it's really easy to forget how important it is to regularly spend time with God and to spend time with God in prayer and in worship, really pressing into him and seeking him. 
we need to slow down and take that time to renew our strength. And we renew our strength in God. Now I've got my iPad here, okay, because I use an iPad, all right? And I bet you guys use iPads at school, or maybe you have a tablet at home, so you use your iPad for doing homework, or, I mean, let's be honest, we use it for games too, or TV, right? We have our iPads that we use all the time. But now what happens when the battery runs low? Well, the battery dies, but then what do you do? Because I mean, let's check my iPad. It's at 8%. Yeah, so um, I definitely need to plug it in and charge it, right? So that's what we do when that battery starts running low. Well, guess what? It's the same for us too. When we start running low on energy or that battle is tiring us out, we need to plug into God, right? Plug into our power source and wait on Him and trust God and seek Him for strength. So if we choose not to do that, well, what happens? Well, it's the same like with the iPad. Our battery runs out and we can't do anything, right? Because I mean, when the battery runs out, it doesn't matter how many buttons you press, it's not gonna turn on, right? You have to plug it in. Well, when our battery starts running low, when we feel ourselves getting tired and you're like, oh my gosh, I just can't do this anymore. Well, I encourage you, don't wait till your iPad gets to 8%, okay? Charge it before it's about to die, okay? And same with us. We need to go every single day regularly charging up with God, plugging in to our power source. Okay, well, let's read Isaiah 40 verse 31 again. That was our power verse. So I hope you guys still have that handy. I encourage you to look it up again. We're going to read it together. But those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength and they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So what does this mean for us? What does that verse mean for us? Well, with God's strength, we can do great things. So I want us to say that together. Let's say, with God's strength, I will do great things. So ready? With God's strength, I will do great things. When we spend time with God and we gain that strength, we can do great things for Him. Now, that might not mean we actually grow eagle's wings and fly off into the sunset. That's, that's not what that means. It means that God can take us higher and farther than we can possibly imagine when we partner with Him and do life with Him, when we do it through His strength. If we do it on our own strength, we're going to burn out. We're going to get exhausted. We're not going to be able to finish it. Our battery will drain, okay? But if we slow down and we wait on the Lord, we press into Him, we read our Bibles, we pray, we worship, spend time getting to know Him, we get that strength to keep going on in the battle, to get through any kind of battle. So I want you guys to remember, plug into your power source. Your iPads have to be plugged in. You have to be patient and wait for them to regain their battery. So be patient and wait on God and renew your battery, okay? So let's pray. And then we'll go to closing challenges. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you don't leave us to do life alone down here. Lord, you are with us, you are by our sides, and that when we face those spiritual and those emotional battles like Joseph did, God, you are working on our side. You're working behind the scenes, even sometimes when we can't see you. Lord, I just thank you that when I wait on you, I get stronger, and that with your strength, I will do great things. Lord, I thank you that this is our reality, that we can press into you and plug into you and be recharged so that we can go on. Lord, I just pray for each kid watching here, Lord, that they would press into you and learn how to recharge and get strength from you so that they can fight any battle that they face. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Oh, everybody up. What you got to know? If I wait on the Lord, I will find new strength. All right, you guys, I have got some fun challenges for you. And the first one is I want you guys to truly practice plugging into your power source, okay? I want you to figure out what that means for you. How do you do it? A way that you can do it is go somewhere private, somewhere quiet. Maybe you don't, have a, you don't share a room with somebody, so you can have your own private space in your own room, or even maybe a closet or, I don't know, somewhere quiet and play some good worship music. You can ask your parents for some, and then grab your journal. Maybe it's your notebook, your 
notebook journal and grab your Bible and just practice waiting on God, praying and worshiping. I want you guys to do that this week. Find some time to do that and practice plugging into God and recharging. All right, and then also we've got our notebook challenge. So if you guys are using this still, I want to give you another verse and it's, I am transformed. And it's Romans 12 verse two that it's found in. So I want you guys to write, I am transformed right up here. And then, like I said, if you have this notebook with you, okay, and you're taking that time to plug into God, I want you to look up this verse. I want you to write a prayer or write something that you learned or something God's showing you. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week.